Well, I was hoping for a bit more sunshine than what I've got today. It's been cloudy all day, drizzly, and pretty miserable, really, up in Lincolnshire. But as promised, I'm going to keep doing these updates on how the garden's growing. And over the last week and a half, it's really grown. And this is in part due to the fact we have had spells of hot weather and lots of rain, which the garden is absolutely loving. So I'll do a whip around the garden. I say a whip around the garden. We all know that this will probably take the best part of half an hour. But I'll try and go, go through a few things and bring a few bits and bobs to your attention that I want to show you and want you to know. So the gravel garden's looking really, really nice at the moment. Everything's away. And I've been looking for more plants to add to this section in particular. A bit more interest because I think I've still got a little bit of space for it. I've got a couple more ideas as well. I've got some more rock that I'm going to add to it because I've got some left. So we might as well use that. But the planting's coming on a tree. Now that there is Cortaderia richardii and it'll be f sending up flower stalks within, I would say, let's have a look at it. Is there any there yet? Yeah, there's one setting already in there. So within maybe a month, month and a half, that'll be sending up its flower spikes. And Cortaderia richardii is a real beautiful, graceful pampas grass. It gets quite a size, but don't let that put you off. Because it really is a nice grass. We've got an Eryngium here. This is Eryngium agavifolium. Not the most colourful one but I like it nevertheless it has more greeny flower heads greeny sort of um, oblong type flower heads on it nevertheless it's really really nice I like that so there's more grass is that rondo donax and that's macrophylla the big one the big tall brown looking thing there if I can get in a bit closer I'll show you what it's likely to do See if it started doing it yet. It's not started doing it yet, but what it'll do is it'll send up some leaves. In fact, no, I thought that might have been one. It will send up leaves through these nodes, these internodes. They'll be coming up. And it'll also send up brand new spikes such as that. And they get massive. So in one season, they'll get as tall as this. And the more mature this plant becomes, the better and bigger the actual grass itself looks or reed because it is a reed if you look down there there's another new one so that's two i can see three there's a big chunky one there three already up four there's one further over there and it it tends to keep relatively relatively compact and it'll never ever really spread yes it may send out sections to that degree but it'll never where is it on there? Uh, da, da, da. There. So it's sending that one out from the main clump, but it's not very far. It'll always remain pretty tightly clumped. But it is honestly really a really nice grass itself or a reed. And I I absolutely love bigger grasses, bigger type grasses. Now this is one of the early seeding or flowering grasses and it's called Festuca paniculata and a lot of people don't get this one they don't understand it or it is but I love it so it's, it's a really early season one it's got quite a nice seed head as you can see or not see quite nice that I like that and I tend to plant it on on mass now this is a Bellotta pseudodictimus, and it'll send up these big spikes, or these spires rather, of uh, tall spiky, they're not spiky, but they're tall and spiky looking flower heads through the summer. It's not flowered for me up to now, it's uh, two years in, and it'll be the first year this year that it will actually flower. It's very much like a stachyus, it's quite nice, really soft, and each one of them will send up a flower. I'll, not, I'll try not to go into too much detail about things. Or we'll never get round. The rose is doing absolutely beautiful now. 
Absolutely beautiful. This one's called the Generous Gardener. And I actually prefer it at this phase when it's sending up all its new growth and it all comes out red like that. That's my favourite section when it's growing. And it's going to send up some... I can't remember what the colour flowers are, to be honest with you. I've got that many roses, I forget. But it does have a scent, I do remember that. I think it's probably white. white whitey pink, a light, a very, very light pink, I think. Uh, I'll show you that again when, once it's in flower. So it's doing really well. And again, it's what, this is its third season just coming into. And I'm growing it up this pergola. I love this pergola. I'll show you it from a distance. So this pergola, again, as I've said before, I, I built this myself. Everything in the garden, as you know, has been built in the last three years with its telegraph pole legs. That's really nice. This isn't, uh, what can I say? It's not really filled out yet. Remember, I, I had a shrub, a spirea in this one. And we took that out and I've been fiddling about with little bits and bobs. And it is going to look good. It's just time. It's not mature yet, but it will get there. The Kamazis are doing really well. It's their time to shine. So they're doing really well. At, well, exceptionally well, to be quite honest. Euphorbia is still looking good. I've removed a lot of the flowers on that one. Because that frost we had did actually knock quite a few back on that one. This is the sorbus. And this is what sorbus is good for producing this type of flower. The flowers aren't out yet, but the, when they do come out, they'll be white. Most of them are. And then they produce whatever berries they produce, because everyone produces something different, be it red, yellow, white, or orange. But that's really good. This particular one will produce red berries. And this one's um, Sorbus scalaris. A small to medium sized tree. That's a nice one. I want like that. I love Sorbuses, you know I love Sorbuses. Now this is Amelanchia olnifolia obelisk. And it's dropping all its flower heads now or it's petals they're all falling but it's been looking an absolute picture and it continues to do so it's finally settled in it's took some settling that one my fault really it dislikes chalk or shallow chalk shall we say and I had it in some quite shallow chalk at one point but now I've kept it here for the last two seasons and it's now settling in it's doing really well This is the Ilo Telefilm, it's possibly one of my favourites, called Carfunkelstein. And it will eventually go a dark purple. And if you want to take cuttings off sedums, or as they're known now, the Ilo Telefilm, now is the time. Go for it. It's one of the Euphorbias, this is Excalibur, and I, I really do like this one. Absolutely love it. It gets bit taller than that it'll get to I'd say about three foot eventually produce yellow flowers on the top as usual I've got three of these around they've all been split from the original one and as you know early on it, it, it had this lovely purple flush but it, it what it does do is it continues to have that look throughout the season now so although not quite as purple red as when it first comes up it's really nice still I'll, colour in there, it's beautiful that. Sometimes you just got to get really close up to see them. So that's Euphorbia Excalibur. There's a Veronicastrum back there. Oh, the tall plant there, that's Veronicastrum and I think it could be Fascination, although I'm not 100% sure. I've now got several and that label never came with it, so I'm really not sure which one it is. The one thing that's impressed me the most of all at the moment this season is is this this acer aconite folium that leaves are massive i know it's to do with the fact it is now in its third season so it's doing it's doing well anyway but 
think the rain's helped with that and it's not been knocked by the frost this year which in previous years it definitely has got knocked and and if they get knocked by frost wherever you are they do pick back up but they'll always be obviously a little bit later so i found a seedling a brunera that's the seedling off alexander's great which is quite nice it's double the size since i last saw it so it's doing well i'm hoping to find one or two more as of yet i haven't it's a little bit shy here's an astrantia and this is a jill richardson selection from the plantsman's preference and it's quite a nice one and it's actually been providing me with lots of seedlings with very dark very dark edges there's a lot in here so you've got to be careful with astrantias because they're very very promiscuous and very very self-seeding so you'll end up with loads of them i guarantee for every every 10 you pull out there'll be at least five more ready to come up but it's looking good i like that one and then there's powder film spotty dotty i said before that i'd forgotten where it was and i found it it's appeared again and i've actually got another couple of those around that are not as good as that and that one ain't great Now this is a Durinicum, and I believe it to be Orientale Leonardo. That's what I believe it to be. My neighbour gave me that one, and we've both been admiring it because it's never stopped flowering. It's looking really nice, and it continues to send up seed heads. Continues, just doesn't stop. So I'm quite impressed with that. So that's the one I think it is. Now there's another Euph um, euphorbia, Oster there. And I've been pulling up all my hostas because the thugs are at, they're at them. And I want to rescue them, really. I don't want them having them. So I've been putting them into pots, and I'll show you that later. I'm moving them on. This is the owl border. And there's the owl. I talk about the owl quite a lot. That's a bronze cast owl up there. Up on the telegraph pole. And the one there, it sits on is 10 foot. I love that feature. The grass again. This one's Miscanthus lutaria riparius. Growing really quickly now. It's away. And it'll make at least 10 foot. I'm hoping it'll get a bit higher than that this year to 12. But I don't know. I don't know. We've had the right start to the season for it, to be honest. So I'm, I'm hopeful with that one. Yeah. The rest of the board is doing well as well. Doing really well. Another Sorbus here out. We'll not linger on those. We've got an Acanthus here. And this is a, a really, really good one. If you can get hold of this one. And it's Rue And it has this... It's almost evergreen. This year it not proven so because that frost really did knock it knock for it. But it's okay. It's um let's have a look at the label. I think it's still there. There we are. Yeah, it's a mollis type, but it's it's actually uh, a, it's a, a mollis but spinosa group. And it's really nice. Look at that. And it has a it has a white flower head as opposed to the the purple ones that everybody sees usually. And it gets quite tall, so I'm expecting it to get almost to the top of that post there, and that's about five foot. And that's what I'm hoping for. Millennials are starting to come up quite well now. They'll not flower yet, it's way too early for that. But they're doing all right. Philictrum, this one's Philictrum Man. I love Philictrums as well. And it'll get to seven or eight, if not nine foot, without a problem. And then this is my own Eupatorium Skinny Mini, doing really well. I have several of these around the garden now, and they're all starting to come up. And that's Eupatorium Purpureum. But I've selected it, and it's called Skinny Mini. Another Astrantia doing well here. Again, Astrantia is starting to flower. This is Muriel's Gift, one I call Muriel's Gift. Another Jill Richardson selection. And that one's looking good. I have several of those. They're all doing well. 
miscanthus are they're all they're all growing now actually they're all doing well there's another new plant in here called baptisia that one come from ben up at uh, it's it's ridiculous showing you this one at the moment to be quite honest it's very very small let's have a look at the label because it is new to me this one so it's called dark chocolate and it has just look it up look up baptisia and you'll see exactly why I've got that one. I've had baptisias before, but this is a, a new cultivar to me. So the gravel area, as I said earlier, is looking really, really nice. Oh, it's warming up now. feels lovely. The alliums are starting to do their thing. I think this one's Atropurpurium, and Atropurpurium has a scent. It's a dark one, very dark purple, and it has a lovely scent. I've got Sanguisorba there. I've got several Sanguisorbas around here, that being one of them. And then I've got, I think there's three in that border over there, I think. And don't forget, this has been getting redeveloped over the winter. Another month, it's going to look totally different. And this is why I have to keep doing these videos to keep up with it. It's doing really well. So this is Andropogon Giradii or Giradii. And it's Weinheim, Weinheim purple, is it? Weinheim burgundy, close. I keep the labels because the, these, this one is new to me. Well, last year. And that does really well. I'll come back later in the year when that's a bit better. This is the Rium Australe. And the reason I keep it in the pot, you can see, it looks a very, very leafy at the moment. It's the only way to describe it. Produces these flowers. They're quite early this year. I've noticed on my Rium Palmatum they're up as well, and I'll show you those in a minute. And I think they're early this year. I love this miscanthus. This was the very first plant that I put in up here at Grassy Bottom, and it had to be a grass. And it's called miscanthus, and it's a giganteus type called Jubilaris. And it has these, this kind of striping in it. Each one will be slightly different. Not fully striped, but very, very nice. And it's doing, this is its third year now. So it's really getting its feet in and looking really good. Some of the early geraniums, this one's Max Frey, doing really well. Circeum, Riviolare, Atropurpureums, they're doing well. They're very low at the moment. They'll grow up another two foot. But that is absolutely clothed in it. Clothed in flowers. Looking really nice. I'm quite happy with this border in general now. There's not a lot I do to this border, to be quite honest. I might juggle one or two of the plants around, but I generally leave them in the border and just move them a little bit because I'm quite happy with what I've chosen for them. That's just in there temporarily. I've put another dustbin in there and that's got the bottom cut off as well. Now I could put that bamboo in there, but I believe it to be a Philostachis, one called Bissettii, but I'm not 100% sure, so I'm just letting it grow on. I found it as a tiny little, it was either a seedling or as a little bit of root that appeared in one of my pots. I'm keeping that. Now, as I said, the bluebells, you've got to be careful with bluebells because they're so, so much a pain because they just spread everywhere. Now, this clump I've quite liked from the day I got here. I've never really moved it because this was a border originally anyway, and it had just had masses of shrubs in it. Nothing like what I've done at the moment. In fact, you couldn't even see that trunk. I couldn't even tell it was bent the way it is, which when I did expose it, I thought that's great. That's, that's just meets with my type of gardening. But going back to the bluebell, I really like this clump and it's, I cut it, I cut all the flower heads off last year. I let it do its thing and then I cut them off. So that's really good. And, and I, um, I quite like it, so I'm gonna leave it alone put a little spire here next to it now and I, I've lo I do actually love spire ears because I love this orangey yellow look they get on some of them this one's called firelight there are lots of others gold mounds another good one I 
This is Rebecca Demii. All this little growth here is Rebecca Demii. And if you look at the back of it, I've pulled loads up and made it a bigger clump. And it helps if you want to establish a garden quicker, make it look more mature is get to a, I had about five plants in there originally and I've let them clump up and then I've been ripping bits off and planting them back again. And they look good. Now the tulips, Ben, who's, we visited at Cliff Bank Nursery, told us that tulips should last for two months. And I think he's right, because this one has never stopped flowering. It's probably into its probably fifth, sixth week now, this one. It's doing really well. Because if you get the right ones, there shouldn't be no problem with that. The boardwalk is looking nice, and the decking and the area around here is looking really good. There's Viburnum David I know. He's, he's still one of my favourite Viburnums. Really like that one. Another Euphorbia. There's geraniums growing, I think. That could be Silostemum. I don't know because I can't remember buying it. I remember planting it, but it's about all. There's a fern at the bottom of that tree. It shows you how adaptable ferns are. It's doing really well under there. I've had to remove an oster that was under there that was doing well, but the slugs had found it. So I decided it was going to be moved. And I can't even remember which one it is. It may have already been here when I got here. But anyway, I've, I've done this to it. I've split it into three. And it's got a little bit of slug damage. But hopefully I'll be able to keep on top of that. We'll see. Euphorbia. This is what euphorbias do. They look great. It's a shame about the shape of this one. I've got one down the garden that's a lot better shape than this but it doesn't have this bluey green look that the leaves have on this one it's more green the other one but it has this lax habit this particular one whereas the other one has the perfect perfect shape a bit like malachi which is up there i've took some cuttings if you want to take cuttings of euphorbia wolf any eyes now's the time to do it i have done a video on that at some point if you look it up you'll find it in there somewhere so this is the boardwalk border and although it still looks sparse, it is, but don't forget it's developing. I, can't, I don't want to cram too much in it at once. I want it to kind of find its feet. And one best way of doing it when you plant a new border up is to place things, work with them, see if they work. If they work, great. If they don't, don't be afraid to change. So I've got, as you can see, I've got lots of gaps in here, which doesn't worry me too much because some of these plants are going to become quite big. It's just not mature enough yet. There's this gap here I'm a bit annoyed with because from up at the house I can see it's too open. Now I know when also once the grasses get going and other tall plants get going, it's going to be a bit different. But I still think there's going to be a bit of a gap there that could do with something. I'd considered a blue juniper called Blue Arrow, which is a really skinny one that'll really suit that. I've had it before and... I know it to be a really nice one, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm still playing with it. Hostas are looking good, but like I say, they're getting a little bit of slug damage, a little bit of snail damage. The little, the little snails are the ones that tend to do the most damage on these. Little whitey coloured, whitey browny snails I get, and they tend to do a lot of damage. The wildlife pools are doing absolutely excellently. I've yet to get a an aerating plant to keep this clear, but it's not it's not entirely clear at the minute, but but it's all right. So that's the Rheum palmatum, and look at that! I just absolutely love this one. My only worry at the moment is it sent these two flower spikes up, and once it does that, and they flower, it can kind of die away a little bit. Some of the leaves will die away, but. I've done it in the past and what I do is I clip them back, take them away and then it sends up more flowers. You've got to be careful because you can exhaust the plant if you're not careful. It keeps trying to send up these flower stalks. So what I do is I tend to let it open the flowers and then wait, I don't know, once I've opened maybe a week or two and then clip them out completely. And as you can see, one of its features is to grow these little leaves all the way up it as well. And they're really nice. I mean, look at that colour. That is amazing. Now it's going to produce, I think this is going to, it should be, I'm hoping these are going to be like a flush red. 
flower on them, little tiny little flowers. That's what I'm hoping. And if they are, then that's going to prove to me that this is atrosanguinium. That's Euphorbia palustris, Wallenberg's glory. And this is the best it's ever been. And I know again, because it's getting a lot of water, it's had Plant Grow UK mulch on it. And it gets a little bit of the runoff that this one gets. Because don't forget, when I built the pond, I made sure where this, these pebbles are, that is a runoff. It's lower than any other point in the pond. So when it overfills, it gets to water all this lot. And it's definitely working. I know it's the third third season in now for this but this year it's gone absolutely nuts and it's doing absolutely beautiful so the pink flower in the background there that's uh that's bistorta it used to be called persicary bistorta but as i said before it's now called bistorta bistorta who comes up with these ideas what else can i show you here well, it's just the wildlife pond, isn't it? The wildlife pools. It's looking really nice. I really like this. It's just one of my favourite sections. It's working really, really well. Here's another one of those Euphorbia Excaliburs. It's looking good as well. And then there's another one through there. That's the same plant. I split it three times. So another Astrantia doing really well. The one I call my Oriole's Gift, just a selected Jill Richardson one. That's looking really good. And then I've split it again. And the reason I go on about this one is because Jill Richardson herself gave it to a sister for me and just has been a, an exceptionally good one. But to be quite honest with you, I... I, I believe there are better ones, but nevertheless, I keep it in Muriel's memory, and it is nice. That's uh, Rubeckia salsifolius. Is it Rubeckia? No, it's not. It's Elianthus salsifolius, I think, then. And that's going to be nine foot, eventually. And it has this annoying tendency, as I always say, of flopping a little bit so we're going to contain it this year we're going to put it into that and hopefully they'll contain it it'll look good silver birch is coming into leaf now it, it seemed one minute there was no leaves on these things the next minute there they are they appeared almost overnight so the, this is a bit of a weird um plant and it's what they call a tripartum one it's a hosta, but it's called hands up. So it's hosta hands up, and tripartum means three, and it, and it does really well. And I've got it planted in the in this cow drinker. I split it up. It's a bit. It can be a bit slow, but it's looking good. Ferns are starting to come up. This one's ghost. It's an athrium type ghost, and this is Dre's dagger. I think this is also an athrium type, and that. Goes a little bit more red, eventually. The stems do, anyway. Alliums, so that's Allium sephyrocephalum. And I keep this heavily pruned once it's flowered. I don't allow it to set seed. But I've noticed with some of my other Alliums that I've got, and I think I put, again, Atropurpurium in here, and it's sent up loads and loads of babies. Well, babies are growing from the base, no doubt. And I have to be really mindful of that, and I have to keep on top of it and I will keep on top of it that's Persicaria Blackfield there I can't it's doing it no justice yet just wait till that gets going and then we shall show you what a beautiful plant that is so this is Brunera and this one's Jack Frost I think it's Jack Frost it's either Jack Frost or Sea Hearts I can't remember to be honest it's, it appears to be Sea Heart but I'm not sure not 100% sure. I bet the label's in there somewhere. But I won't be able to find it. And what I do with them, the flowers have just been exceptional this year. Exceptional. And it's kind of a forget-me-not, because that's basically what it is. But those flowers are just lasting forever. And eventually I shall, I shall take those stalks off, and then these leaves then will come to the forefront, and they'll get bigger than that.
once the flowers have come off. That's the dead nettle, Lamia morvala, that I suggest you get hold of because it's, it's an absolute beauty, especially for early season flowering. And it, as you can see, it looks like a nettle. It's great, I love it. So the cloister pergola is looking really good. Everything's starting to grow on it. This is Gertrude Jekyll, Rosa Gertrude Jekyll, doing really well now. As you can see, I'm feeding it through. So I don't know how you people all do this. I do tend to tie some up and some I try and capture early on and I try and feed them through. And then there'll come a point when I will need to tie some of them on, which I do here. I don't like using this thin wire. I hate using it, in fact, that wire there. Sometimes you've got to do what you've got to do. Now it's setting flowers already and it's a good repeat flower of this. It, it sends flowers up all the time and this is just full of buds. That's looking good. This is Cornus Cusa, China Girl. And it's just starting to develop its flower heads now. You can see they're, they're a, bit, a bit pathetic and little at the moment, but they are getting there. Them there, Let's see if we can focus it. They're looking quite nice now. This is GM Totally Tangerine. And as I said many times, it's a sterile hybrid, so it will just continue to flower its socks off. I shall keep cutting the seeds out off it and it'll continue to flower. This looked beautiful last year, but I moved it. Moved it from out of the pergola area because I knew long term it was going to start to struggle. This is Cortaderia Patagonia and it sends up the most beautiful flowers and it'll do it again this year. But I had to move it and it uh, had to be moved at a certain time when it shouldn't have been moved, but it's going to come back good. So the floating deck's looking good. I love that. It's looking really nice. And this is Frankenbin, or my dustbin that I've shortened. It's now very short. One thing I didn't explain was that was a full-size dustbin. I took out, I think, about nine inches from its centre and then re-stitched it. Hence Frankenbin. And that's going to look great over time. I haven't planted this in yet. I've left it for now. This is Sorbus Cashmeriana, which is producing, again, the usual white type flowers, but none of them are out yet. It's a bit early for that. As you know, I've been working on this area. A few more plants there to go in. I'm trying to get this looking really full, and it is looking full at the moment. Quite a few osters in there. And then there's different plants in here. And that's Ophiopogon planiscarpus nigrescens. And a lot of people think it's a grass. It's called the black mondo grass, but it's, really it's not. It's a lily. It's a lily turf. And I finally put this in now. This is Primula veris, but it's a, a really nice, a really nice looking colour. And I have seen some cracking ones, but this was the only one in the garden that was this colour. I'm sure it's nothing special, but I like the colour, the burnt orange colour that it's taking on. And I feared it had reverted back to yellow, but... It's, and it's quite late, actually, this one. It, it's flowered a little bit later. Another philictrum there. That one's Ellen. And there's another one further down the garden, and another one further up the garden. Now we've got Sambucus, and that's Black Tower. And that's coming into its own now. It's really starting to leaf up. Another month, and that'll be even thicker than that. And I think about another month's time, it'll be at what it should be. It's really nice. Another Brunera. See, I think this... I don't think this one's Sea Art. I think this is Jack Frost. So the other one could be Sea Art. Hard to tell. Hard to tell. So it's looking good. This whole thing's looking good. I just love it. And as I said, I've, I've lifted most of my osters now because I want them in pots anyway. I love I love putting them into pots. And I've got some wacky, unusual ones, and then I've got kind of ordinary ones like that. And that's quite nice. 
and that's Crossa Regal. I've got three of those in the garden. That's one of them. Now this one, which I thought was Crossa Regal, I think it's Drinking Gourd. I think that's Drinking Gourd. I've lost the label to it, but I think that's what it is. And that one's Catherine, the one with the yellow in it. And then this is... This one is Blue Danube, and it's been absolutely eaten by the slugs. I know it doesn't appear so, but I've split it into three now. I've had two. And I've put a piece back in there. What I'm going to do with this now, this is a Yucca rostrata, spiny. Them little black tips are really, really spiny. So be careful if you go on, but I absolutely love it. And I'm going to put this there, these little ones. This is Alcamilla erythropoda. See if we can get close into it. And it has this lovely grey colour. The ordinary erythra powder is just a green. Whereas this one is more of a, a pewter, pewter grey, really. It's looking good. And that's called the Turkish form. It's really nice. The path isn't in yet, and I'm so pleased i didn't put it in this is where it's going to be these are this is part of where it's going to be these are the bricks the tiles that are going in they're going in here and we are going to lay them on some cement base so i'm pleased sand and cement mixed dry so we'll be doing a screed out of it and i'm so pleased i haven't done it yet because the rain we've had would just done it no favors whatsoever aquilegias look at them they're, i've never known them get this tall in this garden I've been here three years, but I've never seen them get to this tallness. I do like aquilegias. I think it's the, I think it's the leaf shape because they do remind me of philictrums. There's another philictrum melon, and I, I do like them, but they're very, very invasive. There's a seed, a seed everywhere. This is geranium, Bill Wallace, and it will self seed ever everywhere. It gets taller than this usually, but it has this really pretty flower. And I really like it. Now it's new in, so it's looking a bit sorry for itself. It will pick up. It'll recover and be okay. I say it's new in, it's been in there two weeks, but it will recover. So this is the Calamagrostis acutiflora Cal Forster border. Or the Cal Forster border. Really. It's looking good. Looking great. Remember, I put some more of that uh, plant grown mulch on this. And that's what's giving it this thick, lush, dark green colour. It does this anyway, but it's got it more this year. And the Allium Summer Drummer is, is already setting seeds. So that'll be the usual purple one, but by the time it gets to where it wants to be, it'll be between five and six foot tall, that one. be really nice. And this is Fagus Sylvatica. And it's a skinny tree. It's called Dowick gold and it's supposed to get more yellow in its first two years this has been its third i've not really seen it go into the yellow i expected i am expecting it to go into a more yellow because i can see it's already starting to look like it will become a yellow so hopefully that'll be a nice shade of yellow but we shall see so these borders are looking really good they're, they're a bit behind at the moment You've got to give them a bit of time. Don't forget they're all new. Everything's developing new. We've got more of that Astrantia. Jill Richardson. More of that. Then we've got the Achena Close. That one's Oriola. And then I've got one called Samurai there, which is another nice one. They will make two foot eventually and two foot wide. Now, for those who've looked at my videos with the Miscanthus memory, this is part of that original plant. And then the other part is over there in the background there. That's the rest of it. And I've also taken more splits from it. And this is a weird one. Oh, let's just get it, get it where I want it. There's a bloke. It's a clematis. It's a, it's a shrubbing clematis, really. And it's called Mongolian balls, and I was given it. I'm leaving it in the pot because I can't decide if I want to put it in the garden. More of a shrub, but I've decided to leave it there for now. See what it does, because I've got... Is that a panicum there? I think I've got a panicum there. Yeah, that's a panicum. I've got a panicum in there. 
which is going to look really nice. More Osters again. That's doing all right now because it looked terrible to start with. It's getting better now because that dead there was all that there was. That bit in the in there was that's all it was when, it, when I first found it in a different part of the garden. And I've got it out now. What's it called? I've got the label for this one. Oh, I've got another bookshaw blue. I bought two bookshaw blues. I didn't know I had two bookshaw blues. One that I've just recently planted. I showed you a bit earlier is a bookshaw blue as well. So that's bookshaw blue. So that's good. It's one of the bluest you can get of the blues. It's green in it, but one of the bluest. This is why I grow philictrum. It's just so pretty. And it will get a lot bigger than that. It's going to make seven or eight feet. Let's go over to this Perscaria. So that's Perscaria. Some of you will know it as Alpina, and that I know it as Perscaria polymorpha. Already setting flowers. Never known it this early, to be quite honest. And it likes the wet conditions. I've put it into the sheep bale feeder now because I felt it would look better than the Eupatorium. And I think I'm going to be right this year. I think, I think that's going to be exactly the right place for it. This border, don't show this border much because I'm still developing it. And there's a few decisions and choices to be made down here yet. We'll get there. This is that Acer that I threw on the pile over winter because I was convinced it was dead. There we are. It's looking good. Acer Capodicodium and it's called Aurea. As you can see, it's doing well. That shouldn't get too tall, maybe 30 foot, but it's on a rootstock, so it should hold it back. The Kamazias again. I love these Kamazias. I just absolutely love them. Something about them. Something special about Kamazias that no other flower gives you. Look at that. That's just so nice. So pretty. I don't like pretty things. Don't like pretty things and blousy things, but sometimes things are just pretty, aren't they? Another Sorbus. The Comixta type. Olympic flame. That's growing well away now, as you can see. So we'll take a wander up here and then we'll end the video. Again, for those who've made it this far, well done. Give yourselves a pat on the back and I'll go on a bit. I'm not showing you half the plants I could have done. There's just too much to see. Just thought I'd bring you around here to the back of the wildlife area. That being the star at the moment. Another roster there, Empress Wu. As I said, I've put it into that tin to protect it and it should do just that that's Symphotrichum and that's uh, one of the old asters called uh, Marina Walkonski looking good and behind it there's Perscaria really going for it now it's all looking good here that Lithrum there that's a Salicaria type and it's Salicaria fire kits, it means fire candle. It's probably my favourite one. Everything's doing well here, as I said. That's guacamole. I bought these, I bought these in as burr rooted a couple of years ago, and I'm, I'm still not convinced it's guacamole. It never produces the colour that it should for me. So we'll end with all this. Doing well. Doing well. Another feature I'm just messing about with at the moment. See what happens with that. And then the nook, which is down here, is looking okay. God, there's so much I've missed out. I can't show everything, unfortunately. But the nook's looking good. It's starting to develop now. And within the month, there should be lots of flowers appearing and looking good. And I can show you those as well. So I'll keep doing the videos. I realise I do do long videos, but you can't. I don't want to shorten them. I'd rather talk to you about what I've got going on. So that's just another walk around the garden up here at Grassy Bottom, just to show you how it's developed and how quickly things get going in spring and how lush they are. And it's looking superb at the moment. Okay, thanks for 
joining me and if you've made it like i say give yourself a pat on the back you've done well listening to me and i'll shall talk to you on the next one Ta-da!